Under the cloak of darkness, we meet Captain Wayne Magwood. Nice to meet you. And climb aboard the winds of fortune. It's 4.30 a.m. The deck hands are already at work making repairs to the boat like this, a hole ripped into the net from an overzealous shark. They'll just mangle a net. They just tear the bags wide open, everything you catch is gone. Other shrimpers are beating us out of Shem Creek, but it doesn't bother the captain. He's already scouted out today's location, the shipping channel. There's only been a rare few shrimp in there. It's, you gotta have a lot of nerve because you got a Why is that? thousand foot ships going by. We head four miles out to see plenty of time to talk. My dad was a shrimper. My grandfather was a fisherman. Now I'm a third generation that I know of, maybe fourth, fifth, I don't know. As the sun rises, the trinets drop. It'll give us an idea of the day's expected haul. We had a little fiasco yesterday, so we got a a little bit of stuff to do here today. That fiasco was a tangled net which tacked on hours to yesterday's trip, so the crew is sure to keep them straight as they hit the water. That's a good sign. That's a real good sign. The trinets bring up our first catch of the day. A smattering of shrimp and fish hit the deck. Looks like we're in a good spot. With the groan of the massive winch, we see what the baskets caught. Hundreds of pounds of sea creatures piled high across the deck. This is lots of fish, jellyfish, what we call sea biscuits. Mixed in are small hammerhead sharks, stingrays, and horseshoe crabs. Now they go back overboard. Now it's time to pull up a seat and gloves for me, please. The crew is able to grab handfuls of shrimp at a time while I'm a little slower and a little skittish. Whoa, that one was moving. And we're actually sorting the shrimp from one another too. You can see the two types right here. This is a, a white shrimp and this is a brown one. Pretty big difference in size. Also, they fetch more at market, these white ones do. About $7 per pound compared to three. The captain's hands expertly take to the wheel for another pass with the nets and more shrimp are dumped on deck. The leftovers, meanwhile, go back where they came from. And it's time to head back. Just how long the day is depends on what the ocean is offering. But today, it's a relatively short one at just eight hours at sea. I don't care to be on land no more than I have to. I like going home at night, but I'd rather be out here every day that I can. Safely moored up. Bandits in assembly line from the ice cooler on board to the dock to get the shrimp ready to sell to the public and some local restaurants. Salt water's in my veins. I'm my dad, my grandfather was a fisherman. I've been around the water all my life. I, I just loved the water. I, I couldn't stand to be away from the water. And when your morning comes, you can say, what a mighty God we serve. The mothers of Joshua Fenley and Otis Brown Jr. looked on as family and friends laid out candles, spelling out OJ and Josh. And show the family how much they love them. Amen. <laughs> 22-year-old Otis Brown Jr.'s mother broke down during our interview, but moments before, she said she knew her son was gone. Before arriving to this scene earlier today, when the SUV was pulled out of to Gadoo Creek. I kind of got a feeling that it was them. I really did, cause, because the last person saw them turning on to Storage Road. And... That was the last thing we heard. Brown had a one-year-old son and Fenley a six-year-old daughter. But I don't know how to go through when I lost a loved one, a brother. Fenley and Brown's aunt says that will be their legacy. Those two boys were gentle, kind, and attentive and would do anything for you if you asked them to do it for you. They did not deserve to die like this. According to the Charleston County Sheriff's Office, Fenley and Brown were last seen on Saturday leaving a party at the Elijah Social Club on Young's Island. Fenley's sister and aunt say this wasn't an accident. They believe they were harmed in some way. This is one case right here that will get solved. Justice will prevail and we will find out who did this to these two boys? The condition of the Jeep looked like somebody hit them in the back. As the investigation continues, Time that you join hand and come together as one. Loved ones are left struggling with little to go on. Could have just stopped and dialed 911. Somebody could have got to them in time. It could have been like that.
all the way over on the roof, and they cut all of that down. And the rain was just coming down. It was just like all over the place. Francis Metz surveyed the damage done after rain and 70 miles per hour wind gusts. Pummeled her home on Duncan Chapel Road in Dorchester County. Have you been through something like that before? Hugo. But, and that was that was the last time. Yeah, and a tree fell. fell then on the house. <laughs> Met says her friend called her to tell her the storm was moving quickly along Interstate 26 and approaching Interstate 95. Before she knew it, Met says it had arrived. And I tried to get in the car and go, and it was raining so hard I couldn't see. So I had to get go back in the house. That's my car over there. The grandmother of nine says she was terrified. Got in my purse and my cell phone and a pillow and got in the middle of the floor in the middle of the house and just sat there and cried. But by the time we caught up with her, humor had taken the place of her fear. As her family began cleanup. With all these pecan trees and and pine trees, but we minus a few now. Met says she's just relieved she and her home are still standing. And I'm just glad that I'm safe and I'm and I wasn't hurt and you know and and I'm okay. And, you know, God wasn't ready for me yet. It's a little chilly today, but the sun is out. The flowers are beautiful, and we can smell spring in the air. <laughs> means it's time to bring all the winter, put the winter clothes away and bring the summer clothes down. We're on a girl trip. We went to elementary school together. Um, I am from Colorado. I am from Illinois. I am from Buffalo, New York. And I'm from Maryland, Columbia. Well, we're from Massachusetts. For us, actually, we got snow yesterday. Yeah, we had I six think inches up six here inches of snow days. yesterday. Well, it's our first time in Charleston, so we're just really enjoying the sunshine, looking around. I was hoping that it would be just a little more spring-like here. I was yeah. thinking it would be warmer. <laughs> I just like the rebirth. It's a, it's, yeah. a, it's a new, it's a new rebirth of the year. No snow is a really good start, but it, it, and it is beautiful. I mean, all the uh, flowers blossoming, and that to me is spring. I think it's an expectation of things to come for the summer and the rest of the spring, yes. Yeah. And so far, what are your expectations based on that? That it's going to be a good year. <laughs> <laughs> If you walk along Folly Beach, you may come across this. A kind of artistic protest to the alcohol ban, a ban spearheaded by this woman. We put the petition together and um, gave it out to the citizens. They went door to door to uh, resident to resident and got those signatures. Lawan Kennedy has lived her entire life in Folly Beach. She says a drunken 4th of July brawl last summer pushed her and about 400 residents to take action. Owners getting real aggravated because people would use their showers and underneath their houses and uh, lots of trash and everything being thrown all over the beach. In September, the council passed a permanent alcohol ban on the beach. The city's mayor pro tem says the feel of the beach city has completely changed for the better. There's a lot less visible people that are intoxicated. Uh, I think that the chance for uh, the potential for alcohol related accidents has definitely decreased. But some residents say the ban is too harsh and unfair to some businesses whose primary revenue is alcohol sales. Even if it's just modified so that you have to drink at certain times or are allowed to drink at certain times. It wouldn't surprise me if it starts to affect a lot of the business down here. It just makes sense to have the ban lifted for the revenue alone that it brings in the Folly Beach. Kennedy says the city has made up for it in other ways. She says the hospitality business is booming, and sometimes she says businesses have to get creative. They lost some, but then you reinvent your business too, okay? You sell more hot dogs.